Okay, welcome to a video that was highly requested and something I have put off for a very long time, and that is a guide to trap tunnels. And the reason I've never done this is that generally my videos are pretty well structured and very focused on a single thing, and trap tunnels are inherently not that. But through playing many, many missions, I have found that there are a couple of key little sections here that I use in pretty much every single mission that you can mold to any environment. So this is going to be by no means a complete list of every way to trap every single mission ever. But honestly, you could use one of these different kind of components in every section of any tunnel that you'll ever need to make. And I try to record some gameplay on stream, so I'll hopefully fill any kind of dead space or examples with that footage so you can see real-world applications. Now, I honestly can't really see a better way to get started than to just go. So first and foremost, we're in Plankerton. That's just because it's a big empty space. There is literally no other reason. It is my understanding that Plankerton affords us the most natural amount of empty space that we can just talk clearly here. Now, uh, obviously in normal endurance or normal storm shield defense, they spawn out here. And let's actually start on the far right here to get into how you sort of want to funnel. Now, I talked about this a long time ago, but funneling is hugely important. And there's kind of a rule of threes. So my cones here are meant to be where the zombies are spawning. They're meant to be in and around this area. Now, you can ignore that ramp for now. That's not really meant to be here. Uh, well, it's not really meant to be part of my demonstration, but the idea is that, generally speaking, you want three walls out from the nearest little purple thing. You know, those little purple spawning indications? If there's one of those right there, then you might want to continue this tunnel out just like this. And you can reinforce it even further by building walls like this, or doing it like this, or if you're in a corner like we, uh, like we have here, then some people will do something where they put a cone just like that. That can work. A lot of of endurance nerds really enjoy that kind of stuff. I believe that these uh, these floor here are quite unnecessary. I rarely do this, but what you're seeing here is a very basic pattern that I do almost second nature at this point. I don't even really think about it, but wall plus ramp means there are two different walls they need to walk through, meaning a row of three is a lot in the way for a zombie to ignore, and they'll just walk through your tunnel instead. And I actually, since we're starting over here, I might as well say this now. Um, something that's really nice is going to be partnered with that original tunnel down there. But honestly, the timeout room is almost more of just like a, a reminder. I'm sure anybody who's watched tunnel videos forever, I, I don't remember who invented it. I am so sorry. I never really watched much of David Dean. It might have been him. If there is somebody who can be accredited to the timeout room, please comment below. This is not my area of expertise. I have mostly learned just from literal experience and friends and conversations, and I never actually watched any video guides. But the basic concept is really awesome. I've, I've always loved this concept. It doesn't really matter who came up with it in my brain, whoever did did they uh well thank you because this is quite the contribution and that is essentially extending your tunnel by a ton and we'll do that later on i'll show it but uh, basically when they go through the tunnel, they'll be hit by the wall launcher and pushed into a corner. And in here, you can do whatever you want. You can do gas traps in here. You can put a ceiling zapper, which will do a ton of damage. Generally, in normal missions, I'll just do straight broadsides. That's pretty casual for me. Uh, you'll see that I use a lot of floor freeze. They are quite expensive, but... We'll get into why I do that in a, little, in a little bit. And generally in these tunnels, if you're just being lazy in a normal mission, that'll do it. Like that right there is basically, I don't even know, like six or eight tiles long. Like we're only walking through two tiles here, but since they're being pushed back, many zombies, if you have double reload on your wall launchers, I of course am rocking right here, double reload, triple impact. They'll be probably sent into this hole once or twice and then twice again. So they have to walk back out every single time. And that actually, again, you guys, I'm actually kind of chuckling here. I was going to start from left to right, but since we're on a roll, let's start with the tunnel that I was going to talk about in a second. This is a basic tire trap demonstration. We'll get to that later. But this is a tunnel that I don't think anybody, again, I don't know if there was any one creator of this. Somebody did it in my mission one time, and I was like, yes, I am doing that. Because to me, this is like the most brutal tunnel uh, that you can make. And you can honestly, again, I'm showing this because you can stick this anywhere. Any place where you have enough room, uh, you can build something like this. Now, this is a straightforward design where we're just walking through, and the basic concept is you have an entire floor of floor freeze or floor spikes. I mentioned I was going to mention what... Uh, I'm itching my leg. I was I mentioned that I was going to talk about what these are for, and obviously, uh, 
you know, the floor freeze just freeze them in place and they take about 20% more damage. And that is really, really nice. That is definitely my preferred. But these are expensive. Floor spikes are really good, at least at the beginning of the tunnel. I even recorded some gameplay, which you can see here. I probably cut it in where I actually only used floor uh, floor spikes instead of floor freeze. And it worked good. Floor freeze would have definitely been more effective. The enemies would have taken more damage. But honestly, just slowing enemies down was pretty much fine for everything but a smasher. And smashers are always going to be a problem. So they can kind of be ignored in that sense. I, I prefer floor freeze if you can afford it. And this was also an old tunnel made before the changes where uh, recently they actually nerfed jailing by making it so that all of these floor freeze and wall launchers can only affect a zombie five times before they're no longer affected and I have not found that to be an issue that has not changed anything at all in my experience and what I always like to say is if your zombie of choice or whatever you're, sh you're, you're pushing back was able to be frozen or stalled whatever five times and it's not dead already you're doing it wrong and that's why we have the broadsides and the gas traps just utilizing every open space of this tunnel so obviously they're going to walk in, get frozen, pushed out. I have put this on a ramp. So there was a ramp down under this floor and enemies were walking up to it. And they were pushed back and barely anything throughout an entire mission even made it past this third bend. This being, uh, whatever this is, six tiles long right here, is hugely overkill. And obviously, like I just said, um, this is going to take away two. This is going to take away two because they're going to get frozen and pushed. So they're not really going to be affected by these wall launchers anymore uh, further into the tunnel. And that's another example of why you might just want to use floor spikes since they might not be able to get frozen. But again, I definitely recommend floor freeze. The gas and the broadsides are just going to be doing doing tons of damage the whole way. And that leads me to another tip that I cannot say loud enough. Always have a wall for your broadsides to push against. I am going to show some footage. Basically, it shows that broadsides, when they're not bouncing against a wall, do basically no damage. I, I had a little rant on stream, and this is a huge thing. Your broadsides need a wall to bounce against, or else they are very useless, because they shoot five cannonballs that just go off into the distance and don't do any damage, <laughs> basically. But if you have a wall on the other side, preferably one tile th uh, one tile thick just like this one these two shooting back and forth are going to go back and forth a lot one tile away and they're going to do a great ton of damage this tunnel obviously it's wider it doesn't really allow for one tile but two is going to be just fine and that'll definitely be nice and that's where like right here it looks really natural to put a broadside here, but shooting off into nothing is going to be worse than no trap at all. I mean, literally speaking, it'll do more damage than no trap at all, but not significantly enough, and you'll never notice it. So definitely save your broadside. As for this tunnel in, in example, this is something I use a lot for zigzags. So say that there's like some natural boundary that just doesn't really allow you to build straight on. Say you're defending your home base, but the spawn is over here. You can zigzag this really nicely. You can just do something like this, and then the tunnel kind of just builds itself. Say the spawn points are over here and they're walking through here. I would funnel it something like this, you know? Sorry, I'm a little messy here. But yeah, if you could just funnel it something like that, everything is going to be pushed into this tunnel right here. And then you can just complete it like that. You're going to want to have a little bit of an access. You always want to have visibility of your defense because you can try to stop the zombies. You can try to put little, little half walls like this. Propanes will get stuck on these and smashers will trigger. So not only will you wreck your walls, but propanes are going to they're gonna blow it up just leave it open let them flow through you gotta go with the grain and again just wall launchers pushing back at every single opportunity that you possibly can and then as i said any space where there is room for it to bounce against broadsides are just gonna make your tunnel that much stronger and then your ceiling damage of choice uh it's basically between uh the ceiling electric field and gas trap i don't really think that there are other options you can use a zap and please do not use tire traps at you know one tile high if you use something like these, you can. If you're going two tie or two tiles high, you can absolutely use a ceiling electric field. Maybe against propane. Maybe tire traps three tiles high is going to be the most effective. But uh, in this case, I'll just use a, a ceiling electric just to show that you don't need to use gas. In fact. Uh, gas would actually be best with floor freeze because floor freeze uh, holds them in place for long periods of time giving the gas more time to be effective gas does not have affliction anymore so it's not going to be as effective against uh, the floor spikes when they're just walking through them so you know ceiling electric field would maybe be better in this instance but if i was using floor freeze i would still recommend gas I am really sorry if that's a lot of information, but hey, it's a big topic, and if you have to rewatch this video, do not feel bad. I'm just trying to blurt as much information as I possibly can. So, 
before we get into the rest of this tunnel, let's take a little break from all that. So these, as, I'm, as I've been saying, can be as long or as short as you need. A tunnel with a zigzag like this very rarely needs to be longer than four or five little tunnels. Like the floor spikes is how you can count it. This is only four long. That is plenty. Even in the 164 players, you guys, I have seen very, very few zombies get through this. You're going to need nurses or healing death burrs to, to make them survive long enough to get through that. Uh, you should be completely fine with that. I want to talk about a little bit of stalling tactics. So obviously, I feel like it should go without saying, anytime that you have access to the edge of the world, use a wall launcher. It is literally infinite damage to just push them off the map, and you can just completely avoid any combat by doing so. And mostly in the deserts, if you're ever defending against a nice big slope like this, say that the brick is the ground and the defense is up here, uh, I do this all the time tire traps they bounce down and roll down very effectively pushing things down with it and you can put wall launchers here because the tire traps won't uh, respawn as fast and that can be really effective it's not going to get every zombie so you can maybe take one out of that playbook a lot of times i'll just do like a floor freeze and maybe a couple of broadsides that'll do it honestly if you're feeling overkill just slap a broad uh, slap a gas trap on it and you'll be just fine this module is all me it's also nice to mention that if you do have an enclosed situation like this where it's not really going to help to push them off, you can just put broadsides or something as well, and it'll do a little bit of extra damage. I'm not going to pretend like I invented this. It's not that clever of a design. I'm not that proud of that. But I will say, I didn't see it from anybody. I saw this as like the basic, most compact, you know, FU zombie kind of setup you can make, and this is the lazy tunnel. This is something you can stick anywhere anytime there is any space for a zombie to get through double broadside gas in my personal preference but you know the ceiling electric field would be better against elemental zombies or whatever it doesn't really matter gas or ceiling electric field obviously if you're in an exploding death bomb where it's breaking the walls which by the way uh, they actually don't do quite as much damage anymore so exploding death bomb no longer precludes us from putting walls down here which is really really nice this is brand new information as of like a couple weeks ago so you guys are getting some up-to-date info check the date on this video and any pinned comments down below to make sure that you're getting the best information for the future but yeah assuming that doesn't change exploding death bomb not too bad but definitely put some seeing electric field up there because it'll be out of the range and won't you know get destroyed like the gas trap would but if you don't care again this is a lazy tunnel when i'm talking to chat just trying to build this is very effective and it's the same thing as before three or even four tiles long should do it i have seen this completely prevent any zombies from getting through and we're talking 164 player missions highest level that you can queue that'll do it this is quite lazy and and frankly quite expensive i mean we've got four traps per block here or per tile you know minecraft player here that should do it and these are basically the same thing if you want to go three high tire traps will bounce more from the higher that they go up technically speaking you can do four tiles high and especially if they walk on cones sometimes zombies will trigger it and same thing with seeing electric field some zombies like smashers will be able to get hit by that three tiles up but don't do that uh two tiles is significantly more consistent and perfectly fine three tiles up for the tire traps is again perfectly consistent and definitely what you want to do and this tunnel just works uh floor freeze or floor spikes like i said or if you guys want to cheap out you absolutely can just put a floor spike at the front of these slow the enemies down as they get frozen that is going to be a very effective combo and i have never seen any need to use like the fire traps or whatever in fact my inventory right here is every trap that i use and i want you guys to know i don't jail or i mean i do jail occasionally in ventures recreationally but normally speaking i don't jail i, I really just don't need it <laughs> i've never done it uh in a way that i really need to unless i'm just getting carried for ventures uh, in normal missions 164 players this is it you guys tar pits are something i'll talk about right after this actually and wall lights can also be somewhat effective sometimes like i said if you're not using uh floor freeze it is nice to have them stunned underneath the gas trap so you can do kind of a budget build if you will i don't know if i would even call this a budget but what you can do is alternate wall lights and broadsides and i'm not saying these are the only ways to configure this use your brains you guys you know come up with some fun ideas if you think you have a better way to do it maybe you prefer wall dynamo or you want to use your zapple max go for it the basic idea is that they are being stalled into place again this would only work if you had the uh floor spikes of course because wall lights and floor freeze are not something you need two of you just don't need two things stunning something like this would work fine but just remember wall lights do not have any extra bonus damage that the floor freeze grant 
Remember, enemies will take more damage when impacted by a floor freeze. In fact, if you are one of those teammates that insists on shooting into a trap tunnel, uh, yeah, your, your, your weapons will do more damage if the enemy is frozen. That is especially relevant for smashers. Um, my point is with that, though, is uh, tar pits. So uh, my point is that that can be an alternative, but where I was going with that are tar pits. Now, tar pits are not exactly a replacement to floor freeze. I've seen them used that way. People like to put them all throughout here, but the durability is, is an important thing. Mine currently have 97 just because of my survivor set bonuses or whatever. That is 97 hits. Now, the floor freeze has 57, but the floor freeze triggers, freeze a bunch of, uh, freezes a bunch of enemies at once, and then you're just good to go. Everything is frozen. The, the tar pit, <laughs> it'll trigger a durability for every single enemy that sticks to it. And then when you burn the tar pit, everything will just walk through. Uh, I'm sorry if I don't have any gameplay for this, but hopefully you can imagine what I'm talking about here. It's uh, very, very low durability in the long run. And honestly, it's not even more effective than, you know, floor spikes or floor freeze in my experience. So what I'd recommend is putting them at the very end of the tunnel because their main purpose is to prevent smashers and mini bosses from getting any further. They will even stop a mini boss so long as the tar is there and it'll actually stop a smasher mid push. Meaning if a smasher is running towards you, it'll get stopped by a floor freeze, but it'll actually just keep on running after it's thawed. With a tar pit, it'll just run all the way through your tunnel and stop. And that'll give you time to deal with it, put a gas trap and some broadside, make a nice little uh, end of your tunnel where it's specifically designed to just eliminate smashers. That'll be great. In fact, that does lead me to another thing that a lot of people have done. I don't know if I totally recommend this. This is more of like a try hard endurance strategy, but technically speaking, you can put a wall dynamo on this and wall darts back there and it'll sh the wall darts will shoot over top. I'm sorry I can't illustrate this. I don't have any crafted, but it's basically here. I'll just craft some right now. It's basically to this effect where it's it's not, you know, anything that I think is really practical for a normal mission. I don't think this is necessary, but yeah, if you have the traps, you can do something like that. That'll do more damage than a broadside, uh, but I don't think that that's exactly space efficient or at all necessary for a normal mission. So I'm not 100% sold on that, but it definitely works for endurance. But I'm also not giving endurance tips here. I'm giving normal mission tips. And uh, hopefully I've sprinkled in enough gameplay to show this stuff used in the real world. What I want to say is these tunnels can be as long as possible. These are three long just for showcasing purposes. It can be one long, as I showed earlier. You can zigzag it. This is honestly why I haven't made this video. It's a pretty boring tunnel in my opinion. When you realize when you watch my streams that I basically do the same tunnel or the same variation of tunnels in every mission successfully, uh, it gets a little dull of a topic. Now, the tricky thing is fitting it to any scenario. And I'm going to show a mission that I recorded just the other day. You can see it hopefully on screen now where we were down under a cliff. Those are the worst case scenarios. In fact, that is a situation where defenders are very important. They got their whole video, link below. We're not going to be talking about them here, but they did a lot of the work this mission. Basically what I did, and I tried to show this in the footage, they ran off the cliff and I made it so that they froze when they got down there. I put a couple of broadsides to do some extra damage, and the only thing that was going to reach over top the cliff without giving them a surface to walk on were three tile high uh, drop traps. And that worked actually like surprisingly well and that was also the same mission where i use a zigzag tunnel i don't know if i already showed this footage but yeah it actually worked really well over there too so it uh it definitely depends on the situation that you're in where you're defending and i honestly as a completionist you know i like my videos to be very thorough i wanted to show a situation for everything but honestly I can't do that. In fact, I'm actually just running through my base here. You guys can see a little bit of a, uh, a hybrid build where I used these, um, what, oh my god, timeout rooms. I just said it earlier. Timeout rooms on top of the zigzag method to just provide maximum stalling. And I will say, this north side of B in my Plankerton Endurance was uh, definitely one of the better defended areas. However, there are sections like this where they have a whole ramp where they're walking up. And I just tried to block it off. And I remember that being kind of successful, but... You got, you got to just work with your landscape and try to do as best as you can. And honestly, if I just run over here, you'll see very, very similar tunnels all throughout. In fact, this is actually a great example of A, I think, where we just had a long 
row of timeout rooms, and that just about did it. I know we're in Plankerton, and typically, if you're even going to need this video, you're looking to trap in, like, high twine when things get really tough, but the same principles apply, and I think you can pretty much do whatever you want with this kind of information. So, definitely try to stay creative, but these are my main tips. If you have a ramp, just use a tire trap. That is definitely recommended. If you have a, uh, a basement or maybe the edge of the map or something, use a wall launcher. Push them into that hole. They'll despawn or get shoved off the map and die instantly. That definitely works as well. Just make sure it's not a mini boss because you'll lose the rewards. Timeout rooms are a classic for a good reason. They are still fantastic. And of course, I love this brutal tunnel design where they are not only getting frozen and assaulted by gas traps and broadsides the whole way, but they're also getting pushed back every single time that they stop for a second. And that just, honestly, in my experience, I've seen enemies go through here four, five, six times. Like, you can make your tunnel way more effective by just incorporating uh, wall launchers in some very strategic spots. You'll note that I haven't used any floor launchers. I have seen them used uh, with little ramps like this where they'll put a floor launcher on the ground and then they'll, you know, do that sort of thing. I've never found that to be necessary. It works. I mean, whatever, you do you. I have just personally never found that to be necessary. Uh, if you're ever pushing this way into like a pit or something, then a wall launcher is going to do the same job. And there are different uh, clever things you can do with that. And if you enjoy it, go for it. I have just never found that to be needed personally so hopefully I covered everything that I wanted to show here today if I forget anything or want to add anything I'll pin a comment or hopefully edit this video before it goes out but yeah if you have any questions comment below I'll try my best but if you need any help on missions I am not your guy you might want to ask in our discord lots of friendly people in there hopefully this will uh, this will give you guys some better confidence in your missions and if I think of enough trap designs that I somehow forgot to mention in here because this is pretty much all I do I will definitely try to make a part two if it's heavily requested or if this video does well Thank you guys so much for watching and uh have a nice day. And then